Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Dizzy's Cover and today we're at a location I've already done. I did it probably about a year, a year and a half ago, but I didn't get inside. But today I'm lucky. Uh, I've got the sun with me today. Last time I was here it was hell snowing, snowing, snowing and raining at the same time. But today, like I said, I've got the sun with me. So join me and we'll go on the inside. Hi, um, we'll get a few shots right in front and then we'll go through it back that way. Yeah, they, I've, I've, they're round here all the time. Yeah. They're at dog walkers and walkers, they're round here all the time. The Jubilee Colliery was built in 1845 and was in operation right up until its closure in 1932. The site is the, one of the last few remaining examples of Oldham's industrial mining heritage and it's one of the most accessible ones in the area. It looks like at some point in the colliery's history, the chimney stack had cracked. The way of solving this, I think, is that they put a massive metal bracket around the chimney stack, as you can see. Since the colliery closed, nature has moved back in to the site 
Trees, ferns, mosses, fungi and flowers have colonised the colliery's remains and rubble. In turn, it is attracting the wildlife to the area. The area, now known as Jubilee, would have been woodland before the colliery operation started in the 1840s. Jubilee Colliery was founded in 1845 to gain access to the mountain mine coal seam 325 feet 99 meters below the surface. Originally owned by the Edge Lane and Dry Clough Colliery Company, it was bought in 1883 by Platt Brothers and Coal Limited, since the coal was ideal for producing cork for use in the company's ironworks in Oldham, where 500 tonnes per week were used in the early 1900s. Although the shaft passes through two higher coal seams, these were inferior quality to the mountain mine coal. Jubilee was one of the major mines of the area, but there was a dozen smaller other ones jotted about the Oldham Borough. These floors are very sketchy, I don't mind admitting my legs are like jelly at the moment. The things I do for the love of decay and abandoned buildings. Last time there, mate. Is that another room? Oh, is that going to where we were before? Yeah. I, feel, I don't mind being on this bit solid. It is, yeah. It has actually, you know, you say that. I saw uh, a, two staircases going downstairs, one of them looks ropey, one of them's got something at the bottom of it, but I reckon we could get past it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind this concrete. That wooden shit over there. This wooden stuff we're about to go across now.
that lot. Stone, the stone. You are? I didn't see that when we looked through the fence. Best shot of the building from the bank in it for. Yeah. When mining eventually ceased, the tunnels flooded that created a huge underground reservoir. To give you some idea of how big the underground reservoir is, it's estimated to hold a thousand million gallons. Water is still pumped out of the flooded tunnels and used in the local water supply to this day. 
The production of Coke became a significant aspect of Jubilee Colliery, following the success of its initial battery of ovens placed against the eastern retaining wall in the south end part of the site. A battery of 26 double back-to-back -back ovens were subsequently erected immediately to the north of the presumably contemporary boiler house in the 1880s, with a further extensions of a similar size to the north in the early 20th century. The remains of a number of back-to-back -back coke ovens can still be viewed above the ground at Jubilee Colliery today.